run away today to a friend's boat. In this episode, we got a call where a friend need to adjust his brand new autopilot. No one wanted to go out and tune it because it's complicated. Mix Russian dentist and American engineer with 30 years age difference who throw it all away for ocean exploration. Sell everything, fix the old boat and sail away. Time for big guns. This is definitely the nastiest job I've ever been doing. Never too late to see the world through our channel. Subscribe and share the adventure. In the last episode, Don Hunters was swapping dinghies around with a couple of surprises along the way. Hi Don Hunters, my name is Dr. Yana and I'm Captain William. Welcome back! I got a call from a friend that he needed his Garmin autopilot tuned and naturally he could not resist. Watch this video. Stay with us to the end because we have a couple of questions to answer as usual. Around the marina boatyard they think I'm pretty crazy and what we're undertaking on our own but I'll tell you I met a guy this morning and I, and I really think that he has us beat. He has purchased this Bertram and has proceeded to completely gut the inside. Removing everything, cabinets, meters, screens. He is going to take it all down to the deck level and rebuild it all. Six, seven months he'll be here. Getting a boat and doing what you want on it, I think is probably half the adventure. And then when you're out using it, you know every detail about the boat. Imagine bringing your wife here and say, honey, this is our new boat. What do you think? This person is freaking impossible. I'm telling him, don't put the rider on the car because it's too heavy. What he does, put the rider on the cart and hold it to his shop. Good morning. I have another mystery. Maybe someone can help me out because I thought I've seen everything. I moved the rudder to the shop because I'm going to cut around the edge and re-weld on the upper corner. Whenever you have a rudder or something going through the water and it has a point on it, you have a lot of turbulence that's created and it has less effect than if it has a rounded corner to it. So I'll be doing that modification, but when I went to move the rudder, which is freaking heavy, it started making a sloshing noise. So what I did is I drilled a hole in the bottom of it and a whole bunch of water came out. Now there's oil leaking out of this thing. I'm trying to think, did they put oil in it? So it had additional weight, thus helping the center of gravity of the boat. Did the oil somehow get up inside from the bottom grease? Zert fitting that's down here? And maybe by continually greasing it, it kept pushing that up inside. Now I have to figure out what's going on. So I'm going to have to open the big old heavy rudder because if they did put oil in it intentionally, oil's coming out. Now I know in some of the old tanks, we would fill them with, with oil to help with the corrosion but there's no oxygen in there. Anyway, if you guys got some comments or some thoughts, for right now, I'm gonna drain this rudder and get the oil out of it. We're on our way today to a friend's boat. We're gonna auto-tune and fine-tune the Garmin Autopilot. It's a beautiful sunny day and we're gonna go to Biscayne Bay and test it out there. Two thousand eighteen Regal with twin Volvo Penta IPS drives, so it's like tuning a rocket ship. I 
Milan has all the Penta IPS drives, so leaving the dock is like a breeze that you might hear right now. <laughs> leaving any dock, any marina is really easy with them. It's like uh, bow thrusters on steroids. The system we're tuning today uses IPS, but it's actually known as Independent Pod System, or PODS for short. And it's a revolutionary way of integrating the motor, the transmission, the props, and the rotation of the props all in one unit. Today we're gonna to tune this new Garmin autopilot system, or maybe we're gonna tune it. We're reading instructions, only if we can't get it figured out on ourselves. So uh, we'll let you know what happens after a couple of runs at, what, 35 knots? 25. 25 knots. After a couple of runs at 25 knots. The Volvo Penta IPS systems are so responsive that the autopilot had the boat moving port to starboard back and forth. So we had to continually run it up at high speed and fine tune it so that we could be running in a straight line with the compass. This is the first time I got to see how the IPS drives run through the water. So if you look at the rooster tails behind the boat, they're both perfectly matched, same height and distance from the boat. So the system is now correctly tuned. That went amazingly well. The setup wasn't that difficult, quite intuitive. The boat was excellent and very responsive. So uh, surprisingly, I thought we'd have about three hours. We maybe took 30 minutes. We actually will be setting up the same system on our boat with a rotary drive. Small difference is that our top speed is nine knots. His idle speed is nine knots. So uh, a little bit different unit, but otherwise identical brain, identical controls. It was so refreshing to get out of the boatyard and enjoy fresh ocean air. It also gave me a chance to test my drone pilot abilities. Hope you guys liked it.
came back from the trip and heard this sound of something running. I actually heard it. So we first thought it's a bilge pump, but now William is saying sump pump. And it shouldn't be running because it wasn't on. I need to have a stick. It's always great to come home to a new disaster happening. It sounds like it might be the air horn leaking. It was supposed to be a great movie night. Isn't it great to have two boats? Stupendous. So, problem solved. <laughs> it's not how you use the stick, it's where you put the stick. The boat has five bilge pumps, and all bilge pumps have a little float switch. The center bilge pump had a little bit of oil diaper caught underneath the switch, so it was on thinking there was water. So it was running. We leave the boat today the first time in months. We come back and it was complaining. <laughs> So I just took uh, the long rod, moved the diaper aside, float switch went back down, problem solved. Yes, love. Ouch. Head. <laughs> that was actually close to a disaster. There is a laptop on top, and if I would bump this, laptop would fall on William. William would fall in the hole. Well, we did have a movie night. But after William fixed that thing with his stick. Yeah, we leave the boat for four hours, we come back and it's crying. Where are you guys? The float switch stuck, doge pumps running. Yep. Anyways, thank you so much for your comments under the last video. We will not bring that up anymore. <laughs> no, no. Positive energy. Positive energy only. Now to Q&A. <sighs> we have two questions today, so let's be fast. All right. First one was It's coming. Oh my goodness. It's coming. Oh my god. Wait a sec. Okay, here. Wait. I got it. Okay. Here is it. Why Yana with I and not Yana with Y, David is asking. So what happened is originally my name was with Y and spelled and pronounced Yana, as in Russia. But then when they changed my passport, my travel passport in Russia, they spelled it with I, and that's how it all appeared. So now I'm Yana with I, but a lot of people think that this is Lana. So, you know, I'm kind of tired of telling them, telling them that it's not, so I go with Lana. Whatever it is, it is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, that was this, and now your question. And I actually, I like that. So, Rick is asking you, but actually this is a question by email. Why does William not finish one project like, like the pilot house top, Instead of having 15 other projects on the go, he could still tape the other project as he works on getting them done. Koi. I'd love to hear the answer on this one because that's my question too. That's an excellent question. I get it a lot, but I also have gotten it the same in the construction business. It's 90% preparation working on a boat and only 10% work. So you run out of parts, you run out of screws, the steel is custom, everything on a boat is custom. So you fabricate and prepare, and the last 10% is pretty easy. So you guys that are watching in the video, you're seeing all the pieces as they come together as a puzzle. And only when the last piece goes together is the, pun is, is the puzzle finished. So to answer your question, it's the only way to properly manage a large project. You can't finish one thing and start the next because it would take you three years as opposed to one year. 
and we don't want to splash in three years. Wow. Any other questions? You guys are great on sending questions, sending comments, emailing. Uh, we appreciate the uh, request and the feedback. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.